So welcome to another edition of I just published an application and immediately got error feedback from my friends. Obviously, that's how it is for developers. So this project is deals for developers. This is at dealsfordevs.com. And the idea is to curate a list of deals that are relevant to developers. And my good friend, uh, Jesse Hall from the CodeStacker YouTube channel, you probably have seen him before. Uh, has this VS Code Superhero course, and I wanted to have a deal listed for his course. His course is awesome. You can go and find the link to this in here as well. And uh, what I have is a form for people to upload deals, so I don't have to do everything manually. So it's a multi-step form, which is a whole big thing, much bigger than you would expect. Like multi-step forms are just pretty complicated. And so you put in a name, you put in all these details, um, and then you go down and review and then submit. Obviously, you have to like fill these out. So what happened was he went in and uh, if we go back and created all his details and when he went to submit, he got this error message. And this error message is super not helpful. It says, please make sure to fill out all the forms or for all the fields. And so if we look inside of the code, what we do is when we actually uh, validate and submit the data from the form, we have a very generic catch. And then what this does is if there's an error, it just says, please fill out all required fields. Now I wanted to go and find out more information about this. And I've talked about using Sentry in the past. And if I went to Sentry and looked at my issues, I didn't have anything. And the reason was I wasn't actually logging this error. So I was catching this error gracefully, but I wasn't even logging it out for Sentry to know about it. So that's the first thing that I will do in the future is all of these will have logs so that it actually triggers in Sentry and I can go view that data and find out more about it. Now from there, I started to look at this generic message of, okay, if I have if I have an error, what I'm kind of assuming is that you didn't fill out something that's required. And if we go back to the form, there's uh, all this stuff on product info is required. Cover image is not on the coupon details. Your start date is required. Those other things are not on contact info, full name, email are required and so on. So what we don't have yet, one of the things we'll add is the ability to give specific feedback for specific inputs. And actually we have built in validation with HTML now that makes sure these are required, but you have the ability to like skip this and just use the nav bar over here to go to the next step. So what we want is when you go to review and try to submit, we should give back specific feedback on what exactly is wrong, but we didn't have that. So we have this very generic message. And basically what was happening is he was submitting a description that was bigger than what my database supported. Now I've since gone through and updated the schema. So now for the description, we have this reference as DB text, but what it was before was a var car of 255. And this is the default that I see all over the place. And if you look inside of any Prisma schema examples, we're using Prisma and then we're using uh, Zeta as the Postgres database underneath the hood, which is super, super cool. Been a ton of fun to work with. That's what we're using for deals for devs. And you've probably heard me talk about it on the channel. But if you look in any example of a Prisma schema, so many of these things are using a var car of 255. Now I actually asked about this on Twitter. Why is it always the 255 character limit for var car? Is that a magic number? And uh, someone said, I think this was a standard back in the day in MySQL. Uh, when Amanda learned database design, this is the max value. And so anyway, this is just what I saw. And I just put this in as I was building my schema, not thinking about the fact that description is, should be something bigger than 255 characters. And I think it's also not even that clear. This may seem obvious to a lot of people that this is related to the actual number of characters. I think we just have like a bunch of database examples and throw this out there and don't specifically address the fact that like that's what this covers is uh, number of characters. So anyway, I started looking at um, inside of uh, Postgres, just kind of comparing something called text and Varkar. And I'll have a link to this. You can go through and read more about this. But Varkar is an alias for character varying a data type that accepts uh, text data and in the number there is a positive integer representing the maximum number of characters that can be stored in length. Now, I also looked up the current uh, Postgres. This is somewhere random, so don't take this as like a definitive answer. But the max size for Varkar data column type in Postgres is 65,000, which is drastically different than uh, than 255, obviously. So we could make that bigger, but also text, uh, in this case in Postgres, is a data type to store strings of any length. And obviously that's got some sort of max. I don't know what it is 
right offhand. In any case, the longest character string that can be stored in Varkhor or text is about a gig. Okay, so that's a ton of text. Uh, the interesting thing is text is not in the SQL standard, but most DMBS technologies provide it. So it's a fairly common thing that we'll have access to. And then inside of Prisma, you have uh, Postgres types. So let's just see if we can get to that. So inside of here, we have text and characters. And so we have care, we have Varkar, or car, Varkar, care. I don't know, what do you use? I don't know. And then they also have uh, text. So what I ended up doing was uh, converting the schema to use database.txt and that incremented the size that I could actually store for that description. So the other thing that we need to work on though, as I mentioned, is having more specific uh, errors here. So this actually still doesn't even address like what if something else goes wrong? So this is where building real world applications gets a lot more in depth and challenging is you need to be looking at all the different types of errors that could be triggered here and then uh, toasting something to the user that makes sense to them and then also logging on your end so you can go and debug that later on. So this is a key part for me to be able to access this in Sentry as I track stuff there. Then personalized messages here are super important. And again, the other thing we mentioned is having specific feedback on where in this form the error is and how to take the user there. And that gets pretty complicated with a multi-step form because if you're here, do we just show the message at the top that says like, go fix the description? Or do we send you back to this URL so you could fix that? I don't know, or both, I don't know. So if you have any feedback on the best way to like provide the user experience from that, let me know, but that just gets kind of complicated. So this is what it's been like uh, shipping updates to production for Deals for Devs is pretty quickly people have sent me bugs and that's awesome. It's really uh, been fun to find them and then fix them and then create some content around it. So make sure you're providing valid uh, and reasonable error messages to users. Make sure you're handling different types of errors appropriately. Make sure that you are using the appropriate data type and size if you're using something like Varkar for the data that you expect for whatever data modeling you do. Anyways, check out Deals for Devs if you're interested in the best deals for developers at dealsfordevs.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.